Sup you beautiful people. Hope you've had a fantastic day. Welcome back to another new episode of What If Deku Ate the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Izuku was quirkless, until he ate a strange fruit that gave him a quirk, the ability to stretch his body like rubber. Now with a quirk, he will strive to become the greatest hero. If you guys enjoy this what if, comment down below and let me know. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel, after watching this video. So let's start this video. Izuku walked home with a tired expression on his face. After the praise from the crowd, he got scolded by the heroes and police for acting so recklessly and breaking the law about not using quirks in a public setting. Katsuki, on the other hand, had nothing but praises from two of the lesser named heroes, asking him to join their agency when he went pro. Still, it wasn't as if he wasn't praised either. Small flashback, you idiot. Scolded death arms while Kami Woods stood next to him, there was no reason for you to risk your life like that. Wow, you're tough said the plague mask hero to Katsuki, with a quirk like that, you'll easily go pro. Hit me up in my agency, I'd love for you to be my sidekick while in training. The news reporter seemed more interested in the praises of Katsuki than the scolding of Izuku, so they mostly ignored the scolding. That being said, whispered death arms with a conspiring tone, looking around to see no news reporter paying attention to them, nice job out there kid. I admit that villain would have been hard for any of us to handle until you came in. You'll go pro in no time. If you wanna have some fun, come to my agency. I'm sure I can teach you some efficient punching and grappling styles. Hey hey. Said Kamui Wood, slapping the back of his hand onto Death Arm's chest. If anything, he should come to my agency. His power can complement mine perfectly, and he can learn some restraining tricks. The two heroes ended up arguing with each other, letting Izuku feel better already. The two heroes had to put up the act of setting the law down, even if Izuku had helped, to avoid other people from having the wrong idea, and leading into vigilantism. Flashback ends. After that talk, Izuku helped out the police and heroes in cleaning up the shopping district a bit, gave his testimony, and left. Katsuki had stopped him for a bit before yelling out how he didn't need help, that he could have taken the sludge villain by himself, and other egotistical boasts before walking away, stating his quirk was stronger. Guess I'm not making it to the dojo today, mumbled Izuku to himself as he looked towards the setting sun. The whole incident had occupied a good chunk of Izuku's time. Just as he was about to turn a corner, someone he never expected appeared before him. I am here announced All Might as he dashed out of the corner. All Might? Said a shock to Zuku as he started hyperventilating, having seen the number one hero not once, but twice now, what brings you here? All Might's laugh boomed for a bit before speaking, actually, I wanted to speak to you, young Midoriya. Me? Blinked to Zuku, pointing to himself before looking around to see if there was anybody else around him that had the same last name as him. He was surprised that All Might even remembered his name, much less know it. Yes, you? Smiled All Might with a dazzling smile, I have a simple question for you. Earlier, during the sludge villain, I heard you charge out to help your friend. May I ask, why when there were professional heroes all around? I, I, hesitated Izuku for a bit before admitting the truth, I didn't really think. My legs just moved on my own to save Katsuki. As her friend, we're not really all that close. He hates me, I dislike him, etc. But when I saw his face begging for help, his usual disdain and cockiness absent, I was already moving to help him. I couldn't stand there doing nothing, and if there is anything I can do to help others, I will not hesitate to run forward. Izuku's voice grew stronger as he explained his actions, causing All Might's grin to grow even wider. He is the one, thought All Might to himself. Young Midoriya, proclaimed All Might, when I saw you the first time, along with your analysis notebook, I thought to myself, this kid has what it takes to go far. But now, I am certain that you will go even further beyond that and in time, beyond me. Izuku gaped at what All Might had just said, shocked that All Might believed that he could surpass him. You seem surprised. Laughed All Might, and that's fine. For you see, you have the mindset of a hero already. Top heroes have always said that their bodies move before they could even think. To move and think past your own safety to help others, to put your life on the line. That's why I want to help you achieve your goal. I believe you're worthy of inheriting my power. To become the symbol of peace. Inheriting, your power. Asked Izuku, clearly confused at this last sentence. You mean your quirk? Is that possible at all? That's right. Said All Might, I'm talking about my quirk. I've always avoided such questions with the well-timed joker zing, but the reality of it is different from what the tabloids theorized. Well, I'd talk more about it, but in short, will you be willing to train under me? Izuku, without any hesitation, said yes. Best day ever. Shouted Izuku as he ran home. As soon as he arrived, he was besieged with questions from his mother, who had seen the news. After convincing her that he was alright, he went to his room and on his computer to organize his data he collected for the day just in time to see a video call from Itsuka. Stretching his arms out and grabbing his headset from the table while grabbing his backpack, he answered the call. Izuka you idiot. Shouted Itsuka into her headset, her speech bubble going through Izuka's ears. Hi Tuska, said Izuku, trying to clear his hearing, I'm guessing you saw the news. 
but Suka was glaring at Izuku through the screen, wearing a simple tank top. New, I just wanted to say that, said Itsuka sarcastically, of course I saw it. Stretching boy wonder saves the day. There was a photo and everything. You're the only one who can do those things and have green hair. Are you hurt at all? I'm fine, no damage, smiled Izuku, I'm made of rubber. Physical blows are hard to hurt me at all. Yay, yay, but there was a lot of fire, shot back at Suka, was it the exploding boy that was caught? The one you said was a major bully, the same one that tried to barge into Rikai's dojo, only to get his butt whooped. Yes, that's Bakugo, answered Izuku, somehow the sludge villain got him. Can't say he didn't deserve it, muttered Itsuka, so, let's change the subject. Are you preparing for UA? Of course. Smiled Izuku, I wouldn't break our promise. You better make it. Warned Itsuka with a threatening tone, though her smile ruined that, I won't forgive you if you don't make it. I promise I'll make it, said Izuku, keep it a secret, but I'm getting training from a pro. What? Lucky. Complained Itsuka, who is it? That'd be spoiling it, smirked Izuku before hearing his mom yelling for him, telling him it was time for dinner, I got to go. It's dinner time. Alright, see you, said Itsuka. Bye. Waved Izuku before hanging up the call, leaving his room for dinner. Back at Itsuka's room, she sat on her chair, gazing at the empty screen before slowly putting her hand on it. I can't wait to see you again after so long, whispered Itsuka before turning her screen off, standing up to change her clothes. At the very corner of her room, where her bed was, out of sight of the camera, was a small plushy doll that suspiciously looked like Izuku. Two days later, at the Gaba Municipal Beach, there sat Izuku and Toshinori Yagi, just talking to each other for now. It was a Saturday, which meant Izuku didn't have to worry about school for the day. Toshinori was explaining his quirk one for all, why he was looking for a successor and other secrets that couldn't be afforded to be spread. Izuku's respect for All Might grew more profound as he heard his new teacher still charging in to do hero work despite injuries and waning time. But enough about me, coughed Toshinori, currently in his emancipated form, tell me more about your quirk. Well, in short, I'm completely made of rubber, said Izuku, stretching his face past human limits, before letting it snap back in place, skin, bone, everything. I'm immune to blunt force, or maybe to a high degree. I've never been punched by someone with a lot of strength like yours. Some bullets rebound off me, though never tried real bullets. Too scared to test that out, though one of the doctors theorized 0.2 caliber bullets is the limit. I can stretch up to 150 yards in total before I feel my limbs being stretched too much. So far, I've been taking martial arts to supplement my quirk. Holy though Toshinori mentally, shock nullification, possible rebounding projectiles, extending limbs. It's like several quirks packed into one, but it's simply rubber. His quirk could easily get him past the top 20 heroes in Japan. At one for all on that, he'll truly be the one to usher the age of peace. Not to mention, he'll most likely be able to or at least soon use 100% of its current power, and focus more on stockpiling during his time. Also, I can't swim, added Izuku, causing Toshinori to blink. As in, you've never learned to swim. Clarified Toshinori. No, I can't swim at all, said Izuku seriously. Whenever I'm in standing water, be it the swimming pool, the ocean, or even in the bathtub, I lose strength as soon as the water hits my skin. I'm fine if I'm only knee deep, but any higher and I lose strength, and can't even move to save my life. Nobody knows why. I can handle running water, so ocean waves, showers, and hoses I'm fine. Toshinori sweat dropped at such a weakness, but decided to shelve that for later. Perhaps a full body suit that would act as a buffer from water to prevent it from touching his skin, might solve it. Alright, let me see what you can do first before I pass the torch, said Toshinori as he stood up. Take off your shirt and pants, so I can inspect if your body is ready. A little nervous, Izuku took off his clothes until he was just wearing his boxers, allowing Toshinori to inspect his body closely. Hmm, good muscles, complimented Toshinori, checking Izuku's muscle structure. The muscles on Izuku were meant for fighting, not for show like some bodybuilders. Flexibility was no problem due to his quirk. I would have suggested training a little, but your body is a worthy vessel strong enough to use one for all without your limbs exploding into pieces, said Toshinori, while he transformed into his hero form, All Might. Explode. Shivered Izuku, imagining his limbs flying off his body, guess I have Rikai's training to thank for. Indeed, boomed All Might as he plucked a piece of his hair from his scalp, let us not waste any more time, young Midoriya. It is time for you to inherit one for all. Now, eat this. With a flourish, he presented his hair to Izuku, who blinked in confusion at the presented hair before tilting his head at it. In order to inherit one for all, you must ingest the current torch holder's DNA. Hair is the least disgusting part of the human body you can digest. Don't worry, I've washed my hair before coming here, and made sure that there was nothing in my scalp, stated All Might, flourishing his hair to Izuku once more. Yes that makes sense, said Izuku with slight reluctance while taking the hair, I think just pumping some blood directly to my stomach, would be easier to swallow. Izuku ate the hair and drank a lot of water to let it wash down his throat, gagging as he did so. Excellent. 
said All Might. Now, it'll take a few hours for your body to metabolize the hair properly and use one for all. So let's commence with your training. For the next 10 months, you will be training not only your body, but cleaning up the trash here. For you see, I did a little research around here and found out this section of the beach has been littered with trash for years. Ah, that's right, not at Izuku. The ocean currents here keeps piling up trash from the sea. Because of that, it became an illegal dumping ground for other people. It's impossible to tell whose stuff is whose because of how everything piles up. Nobody really wants to deal with it. And that's why we're doing it. Proclaimed All Might, because despite all the flashy stuff heroes do, most upcoming heroes just want fame, glory, and fortune. I, however, believe that the core of all hero work is volunteer work. Do you believe in my views if so, then let's bring this beautiful ocean view back from when it once came from. Izuka rapidly nodded his head in agreement and began to stretch, getting ready to work out. Brilliant, laughed All Might, then let us discuss how we should plan your training schedule. The two traded ideas and schedules, All Might doing his best to include time for Izuku to head to his dojo to also train there. He was impressed that Izuku's footwork came from there, and it would be a shame if Izuku stopped going there, even if it was to train with All Might. Just as they finished their scheduling, Izuku felt a change in his body. I think I just finished absorbing it. Said Izuku excitedly. Excellent. Said All Might, how do you? All Might didn't get to finish as Izuku suddenly threw up blood. Midoriya Izuku, talk to me. Said All Might in worry, were you allergic to something that I should have known? Izuku didn't get to answer as he threw up more blood, some coming out of his eyes now as his body began to convulse. Hold on. He panicked as he grabbed Izuku, carrying him bridal style, I'll get you help. All Might couldn't just bring Izuku to the nearest hospital. The secret of one for all could spill out to the news, as well as his injuries. Instead, he needed the best doctor and people whom he could trust. All Might had already hit the panic button on his phone to inform his personal doctor he was coming. Bending his legs to their utmost limit, All Might shot off to the only place he could go. To Uehai, his alma mater. The youth heroine, recovery girl, Akachiyo Shuzenji, was relaxing in her office at Uehai. It was a weekend, which meant that there should be no students needing her services. She was going over some files on the newest students, as well as some blood work on her cell phone ring. She paused as this ring wasn't her usual ringtone, but a specific one meant for Sos. The recovery girl quickly grabbed her phone and opened it to see the photo of All Might blaring on her phone. Otashi, what did you get into now? Said recovery girl as she quickly pressed the button. Her simple nurse room transformed into a room that looked like it was prepped for intensive care surgery, before quickly pushing a gurney out. As she was quickly walking, the principal of UA, Nezu, quickly joined her. You got the signal. Asked Nezu as he quickly helped push the gurney. Yes, and it might be better if we get Nimuri and Ectoplasm here, snapped her recovery girl. They're on their way, replied Nezu calmly. I figured there might be bleeding, so I've also called in Sekijuro. But call, complimented recovery girl, have Ectoplasm meet up in my room, and prepare both A-type blood and O-type blood ready for transfusion. Recovery girl, Nezu, Nimuri Kayama Aka the 18 plus only hero. Midnight, and Sekijuro Kansas Aka the blood hero. Vlad King, were all waiting at the secret entrance of Yue, they chose not to use the main entrance, as it would attract far too much attention, and it was closer to Recovery Girl's room. Both of the latter heroes were currently wearing their hero uniforms, having ready to go out on patrol. Suddenly, the ground before them turned into a crater as All Might arrived in style. Are you alright? Shouted Recovery Girl, noticing blood all over his uniform. Curiously, there was also vomit. I am not harmed, but the emergency is for this boy. Said All Might hastily, forgoing his flowery speech as he quickly put a convulsing Izuku on the gurney. Izuku's eyes had already rolled up his head, revealing the whites of his eyes. All of them seemed surprised that All Might had used the So's signal for this boy, but forewent the questions, and quickly moved Izuku towards the ICU. Izuku's body began to suddenly sport cuts, blood flying from his limbs. Midnight put this boy to sleep, ordered recovery girl, as both All Might and Vlad King were trying to stop Izuku from lashing out. Midnight nodded and pulled ripped open her thin bodysuit sleeves to allow her skin to be exposed, before activating her quirk, Sonambulus. The rest of them quickly held their breath as the sleeping gas washed over Izuku, causing him to fall asleep. He still thrashed, but it was now in a much more manageable state. Vlad, clawed up those wounds. Tashi, what's his blood type? Snapped recovery girl, not having been prepared for a boy instead of All Might. Not sure, stated All Might with a frown before retrieving Izuku's wallet. He quickly opened the wallet and rifled through it before finding a blood donation card from the Japanese Red Cross Society. He's O-type blood, he said quickly. This or luck, we don't have any staff with O-type blood, muttered recovery girl, midnight, I need you to head to the nearest hospital, and grab any O-type blood packets they can spare. Vlad, make sure those cuts don't reopen. He can't afford to lose any more blood. Midnight quickly ran out of the hall, already diving into her car before driving off. The others arrived into the room to see Ectoplasm with his clones already prepping the room, a blood transfusion packet already hanging on the infusion stand along with an IV drip. 
Let that blood pack it out. He needs O type blood, said Recovery Girl, as All Might and Vlad quickly transported Izuku onto the bed. Ectoplasm quickly had his clone toss him one and replace the packet as Nezu, and Recovery Girl inserted the catheters into Izuku's arms. Ectoplasm's clones quickly gathered around Izuku, each one placing their hands on Izuku to prevent Izuku from moving, while Vlad stayed to make sure his blood didn't mingle into Izuku's bloodstream. Go take a shower, said Nezu, you can explain everything after that. And transform back to your regular state, no point in you wasting your valuable time while doing nothing. All Might nodded as steam gathered around him before he transformed back to his skinny self. All of UA staff have already been informed of All Might's injury, as he was going to be teaching there next year. After quickly showering and changing clothes, Toshinori pulled up a chair and sat down, his hands covering his face as if praying. What happened? Asked Nezu as he put a cup of tea next to Toshinori. Recovery girl was currently doing her best to analyze the situation. I don't know, shivered Toshinori. One moment he was fine, the next moment he started vomiting blood like I do. What is he to you that you would risk bringing him all the way here to UA instead of a nearby hospital? Asked Nezu. He's my successor, or my victim, answered Toshinori with a grave voice. He's the one I chose to be the next torchbearer. Except this has never happened before for anyone inheriting one for all. Nezu nodded, understanding his thought process. The information of one for all could never be allowed to make public, or an age of chaos would be upon them just as before, when quirks first started to appear. Was there something he was allergic to? Asked Nezu, maybe your shampoo. I use a special shampoo given to me by recovery girl. It should not have triggered any allergies or intolerance in the human body, and none would have caused the boy to react this badly, said Toshinori as his hands tightened into fists, I am a failure. I failed to save my master because I was weak. I failed to completely defeat all for one and sustain serious injury, because I was prideful and didn't listen to my sidekick, Sir Nidai. And now I failed my successor, which may result in losing one for all, but most importantly, could kill him. I've taken a potential hero and shattered him. Nezu merely patted Toshinori on the back, unable to form any words to comfort him. Even with his vast intelligence, he had no words to offer to help Toshinori. He did not know the details of one for all well enough. What about your other sensei, Gran Torino? Asked Nezu, a shiver of fear crawling up Toshinori's spine, as soon as the name was mentioned. He might know something you've missed. Toshinori nodded and swallowed his fear before dialing to his old master. A few dial tones later, the cow went through. Toshinori-kun, you never called me until now said an elderly voice, lack of respect, the way I see it. I teach you, and you. Gran Torino sensei, interrupted Toshinori, I need you at UA right now. It's about Nana. I'll be there as soon as I can, said the elderly voice before the call ended. The minute stretched into hours as Toshinori waited. Midnight it arrived with a box carrying dozens of O-type blood packets. Gran Torino arrived later and started questioning what had happened. Now, all they could do was play the waiting game. So, he's the one. Asked Gran Torino, taking a sip of his cold tea, not minding that the optimal temperature had long disappeared. So I hoped, said Toshinori with a tired voice, but now, my hands will be stained with an innocent's blood if he doesn't pull through. I don't even care if the succession failed and the quirk is lost. I just want the kid to live to become a hero like he always wanted to be. May I know why you chose him? Asked Nezu curiously, slowly shifting the subject into a more light-hearted one. Toshinori gave a small smile before telling his tale about the Izuku, how they met, and how studious he was. He even pulled up a video of Izuku rescuing Bakugo, though Nezu asked for multiple points of view. There were people filming Izuku through their cell phones, some concentrated on Izuku only, others on the sludge villain, and finally some that tried to get the whole view. Nezu ended up just pulling up videos from a security camera that had been monitoring the area to get another point of view. Impressive, said Nezu softly as he finished review the video, though a bit depressing that six professional heroes were on the scene couldn't do anything. Several of them were graduates of this fairy school, too. I was there too thought Toshinori to himself, chastising himself for not doing anything. A hero should be willing to risk his life, and just because his time ran out didn't mean he should have stood back. Gran Torino noticed him in the background, and probably kicked him for not doing anything. I may need to change some things around here if we are sending heroes who can't seem to do anything and say that they need someone with a suitable quirk, continued Nezu, his eyebrow twitching when he heard one hero say that. Luckily that hero was not a graduate of his school, otherwise, he would have demanded that hero's license be revoked. Are we not still making it more combat-oriented? Asked Toshinori curiously, it is part of the reason why you hired me. Yes, the hero program will be more combat-oriented, replied Nezu, now looking at different angles of the fight, but we may want to increase what they can do and think. Already, I can think of several different ways these six heroes could have teamed up and defeat this villain and save the hostage. Some of them could have done it by themselves. For instance, Backdraft could have just hosed the villain enough that the child struggling to get out would have escaped. Water would have diluted the villain fast enough. Whatever else Nezu was going to say was halted when Recovery Girl entered the room. All three males quickly asked if Izuku was alright. 
He's stable for now, said recovery girl as she hopped onto a seat. Well All Might quickly whipped up some warm tea for her. I have ectoplasm using his clones to keep a close eye on him. He has a very interesting body. He's completely made of rubber. Yes I am aware of that, nodded Toshinori. Even his bones and organs are made of the same thing, snorted recovery girl. I was worried how I was even going to resuscitate the patient, if I can't use electricity to start up his heart. It stopped Toshinori almost shouted. Luckily no, snapped recovery girl, but even if it did, I would have just had your Vlad to do it manually. So what was the problem? Asked Nezu. That's the problem. I don't know, admitted recovery girl, nothing in the blood work suggests any viral or bacterial infection. Wait blood cell count was normal. Steady pulse for now. If his status doesn't change, I may need to take him to the hospital to do a CT and an MRI scan. Do it, not a Toshinori, it's more important that young Midoriya is saved. Two more hours later after recovery girl was given the story about Midoriya, she was ready to make the call to have Izuku transferred. Suddenly, ectoplasm burst into the room. It's a boy. He started, he started thrashing again, and this time strong enough to take out my clones. They all quickly hurried into the room, Toshinori transforming to his all might form, ready to grab Izuku and take him to the nearest hospital, damages to the school be damned. As soon as the door opened, they stopped to see Izuku quietly sitting up now and apologizing to the clones, as one of them gave him a cup of water. Young Midoriya, are you alright? Shouted All Might as he rushed towards him in worry. Izuku took a gulp of water before replying, Yeah. What time is it and where am I? You are currently at UA High, answered Nezu. As for the time, you have been unconscious for the past 7 hours. 7 Izuku half shouted, I need to text my mom to tell her I'm alright. A few quick texts later and roughly half an hour later due to Izuku fanboying a little at being at UA High, and seeing several heroes pop in and out to check on him, Izuku was alone in the room with Tashinori, Nezu, Recovery Girl, and Gran Torino. So, do you know what happened? Asked Toshinori after he transformed back to his regular self, having told Izuku that everyone in this room had his complete confidence and knew about one for all. Yay, not at Izuku, the seven hours, I was actually in a rather interesting place. I think it was somewhere in my mind. And with those seven hours, I learned more about how I got my quirk and the source of it, as well as a little more detail about one for all. Why do you say that? Asked Recovery Girl. Because I met the past predecessors of One For All, stated Izuku, staring straight into Toshinori's eyes. I met Nana Shimera and the other six users of One For All. Izuku flashback, telling his story. Where am I? Asked Izuku as all he saw was darkness. He remembered talking with All Might, feeling something change within his body, then vomiting blood and pain racking his body. After that, it was all blank. Izuku stood up in the darkness, trying to find where he was now. He noticed he didn't have clothes on, but it was so dark that he couldn't even see his own hands. You're mine, and mine alone. Nobody else can be here. Hissed to Monocorus. Suddenly, Izuku felt himself being wrapped by invisible chains, squeezing his body hard enough that his skin started to bleed. He tried his best to escape, but to no avail. I will not condone intruders. Get out, get out, get out. Yelled the Demonocorus once more. Let the kid go. Shouted another voice. Izuku soon adjusted to the darkness before blinking as he saw seven balls of light, clashing with what seemed to be a devil, complete with black horns, fiery dark red wings, and a large black body with claws. The balls of light would clash against the devil, causing the chains to grow tighter around Izuku and hurting him even more. He could hear the balls of light yelling, Smash. Moscow Smash. Tokyo Smash. Beijing Smash. London Smash. Paris Smash. Watermelon Smash. Leave my boat. Shouted the devil as he swiped at the balls of light, also causing the chains around his body to hurt him. I don't think my body can take any more of this. Thought Izuku as he felt blood running down his body, stop. Both the devil and the seven balls of light stopped moving, looking towards Izuku to see him chained up and bleeding. You see? This is all your fault. Shouted one of the balls of light, you're hurting him just by being here you devil. I was here first. Shouted the devil, it is you who should leave. I have been residing here since he was seven. I have been here seven years, and have not harmed him at all. I gave him his powers. Wait 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 wait, said Izuku quickly, you've been here for 7 years. In my body. Wait, was it when I ate that weird fruit? And that you're responsible for me having a quirk. When the devil nodded, the balls of light sweat dropped simultaneously. Wait, hold up. You're saying that you came here due to the boy eating a fruit? Asked one of the balls of light, that's crazy. Dude, you realize that we're pretty much the same as the devil, the hair by the current host. Said another ball of light. Good point. So why are you all fighting? Asked Izuku, not to sound selfish, but it's really hurting my body. All I remember before I came here was that I was spewing blood, and pain was everywhere. There, well, he started. Said another ball of light, this one with a feminine voice. You came up to me and started yelling smash smash. Retaliated the devil, I will not leave here. The devil and the balls of light began to start squabbling again, until Izuku yelled them to stop once more. Can't you both just, live together in peace? Asked Izuku, I mean, it looks like there's a lot of room here. 
if they respect my stuff, then sure, muttered the devil. My kind argues with each other that we end up fighting and destroying our host body. It's kind of the same thing that was happening here. Please don't destroy it, I'm still using it, begged Izuku. Long as the devil doesn't claim your soul when you die, glared one of the balls of light. PFFT, as if that's worth anything, said the devil, I just get to live comfortably here instead of a fruit. When the host eyes, I just move into the closest Ubari King Melon I can find and wait until it's eaten. Well that's, interesting, noted the ball of light. Wait, are you also the reason why I can't swim? Asked Izuku. Ah yes, the seas despise us, nodded the devil. We are the incarnation of the sea devils, so the seas themselves reject us, robbing both of us of our power. Well that's informative, nodded Izuku, not really knowing how to react that his powers were given to him by the devil. Is there more of you? That's the weird thing, said the devil. I don't sense any of my brethren in this world. Who knows, I was transferring from my original host when he died of old age when the fruit I was going into suddenly got zapped by a storm. So maybe. Alright, now I have that cleared up, said Izuku before facing towards the seven balls of light. Who are you guys? We are the remnants of the past, stated one of them, the past predecessors of one for all. At this, the balls of light slowly began to transform until they were all human, though Izuku could barely see two of them, who preferred to stay in the shadows. Don't mind them, said the cheerful female of the group, taking the lead as the spokesperson, so you're the one Tashi chose, the ninth bear. You know, you kinda look like someone who would belong in my family, like a descendant. I'm Nana Shimura, the seventh torchbearer. You do look like my mom a bit, nodded Izuku, taking in the news quite well. He would have to put away time later to freak out. Hmm, funny coincidence. Oh well, shrugged Nana. Looks like Tashi chose well. I'm surprised all of us, she gestured to herself and the other bears, are talking. We usually leave a vestige of ourselves within the quirk whenever one for all is passed down. If you look over there, you can see Tashi starting to form. Izuku looked at the distance to see a ball of light slowly forming, just as Nana said. So, is this normal? Asked Izuku. Don't know, shrugged Nana, I've never experienced this before. Don't think the others have either. When she looked back, the others nodded in agreement. But if you think about it, sounds romantic, smiled Nana. All the thoughts of each user are gathered upon here and stored as power. Though we may fall midway on the path, we can meet each other once more within one for all. So, does this mean you'll all stop fighting in my body? Asked Izuku. Hey, I guess I'm cool with it if he doesn't eat your soul, nodded Nana. Just don't move my stuff and ask politely, growled the devil as it somehow managed to create a television set, a seat, and video games. Oh sweet, let us join in. We can play a player smash said one of the predecessors before they all joined in. As Izuku was slowly fading away, one of the users of One For All stood up. Izuku noted compared to everybody else, this one seemed frailer than all the others. Seems like we pass a point of singularity already, said the man. But then again, this has never happened before. Perhaps you, the ninth bearer and your teacher, the eighth bearer, will be able to stop him for good. This will probably be the first and last time we'll ever be able to speak like this again. But don't worry. You'll never be alone. As the frailer looking man extended his hand, so did Izuku, mimicking his action. Perhaps, now, we'll make something even newer, smiled the man as their hands touched, one for all and the power of, the devil fruit. Together. Hm, I'd be interested, said the devil as he put his clawed hands on theirs. The light shone brightly as one for all and the devil's power given to Izuku combined before he vanished. Any idea what you did? Asked the devil. I believe I've given him the ability to swim again, smiled the man, I've layered one for all over his original quirk, thus convincing the sea that he's not a sea devil, and thus not a hammer anymore. At the same time, your powers have infused over one for all, giving it a set of different protection. I'm not sure what, but it should be useful. And when he decides to pass on one for all to his successor, it will easily separate. Works for me. Laugh the devil, come. I've got some board games to play and finally some occupants to play with. Flashback ends. The audience was in shock, awe, and some doubt as Izuku finished his story. Truly, you spoke with the vestiges of the past users of One For All. Said Toshinori. Interesting, said Nezu, sipping on some tea, quirks even to this day are a mystery. Especially this certain quirk of yours. I'm a bit worried about that devil you said was in you, grunted Gran Torino, slightly afraid that the devil would consume the boy and all the remnants of One For All. Hmm, will your pulses seem normal, muttered recovery girl as she managed to finish her checkup on Izuku's body, while he was telling the story, but no exercising for a week at least. I don't care if you want to prepare for the UA high exam, your body won't be able to make it if you overwork it. You still have 10 months, so that should be plenty of time. I'd say a month, but something tells me that you and Toshinori would ignore that order. So a week for healing, then the next two weeks can be just light stretching and sparring. I want you getting at least 8 hours of sleep in those resting weeks. Sorohiko, I want you to watch over them and make sure they follow this rule. Otherwise, I will see all three of you in this office with an extra large needle. Yes ma'am, saluted all three males in fear before relaxing a little once more. 
Young Midoriya, I am truly sorry you suffered like this, said Toshinori as he grasped the bandaged hands. I feel like I have failed you on this, just like I failed my master. Izuku was about to say that it wasn't his fault, that he had no idea he had a devil inside, that would cause such a thing when a voice rang in his head. Looks like I can still talk to you a little from the after effects at Nana from inside Izuku's head, though it was fuzzy though it's not for long. Lend me your body for a bit, boy. Izuku let Nana take control, he used his hands and slowly lifted it out of Toshinori's hands and placed them on his face, forcing him to smile. What are you? Started Toshinori, but Izuku's next words shocked him. I thought I told you, Toshinori, no matter how scary things get, give him a smile, said Izuku, as his voice blended in with Nana's voice, so all could hear, take pride on what you have done. I took a peek at the kid's memory, and am proud of what you've done since I left this world. You worked hard and truly brought forth an age of peace, just like you said you would. I don't blame you for my death, I told Sorohiko to take you and escape. I knew my time had come as I had taught you all that I could, but you needed to live. Sure you have some boneheaded moments, but who doesn't? Now live your life, teach your successor, and don't show up in the afterlife until you die of old age. With that statement, she gave him a small bonk to the head before turning to Gran Torino, it's good to see you still alive old friend. Keep at it. Yay, said Gran Torino, wiping a tear away. See you later, said Nana, my time is up. I don't know when we'll be able to do this again. Maybe never. But know that even if you've passed on one for all, you're never alone. Izuku closed his eyes for a bit before opening them again. Tashinori had burst into tears, crying into his lap as soon as Nana had finished her message for him. What I miss? Asked Izuku, blinking as he saw Tashinori and Gran Torino wiping off some tears. Truly amazing, noted Nezu, to think the remnants of others would come to deliver one last message. Indeed, said recovery girl before handing Izuku a note, this should keep your mother calm. It's a doctor's note saying there was an accident, and that you just happened to be caught in the crossfire. This should prevent her from asking too many questions. Oh crap, how am I going to explain all this? Hailed Izuku, pointing to his whole body. It looked like he had just gone through the shredder. Indeed, Inko panicked as she hyperventilated when she saw Izuku walking home in bandages. Luckily, it took the combined effort of Nezu, Tashinori, and Recovery Girl to calm her down, all of which had accompanied Izuku home. Still, Inko strictly forbade Izuku from training for a week and a half, to make sure he would recover before treating them all to a home-cooked meal. Nezu was ecstatic to have someone treat him like a normal person, ignoring his overall look, while Tashinori couldn't help but glance at Inko more than once. She really did look like his old master. They also went over that Izuku had caught a pro's eye, and wanted to help train him. Though no name was given, Nezu promised that the pro hero was trustworthy, and that Tashinori had been sent to help train Izuku overall at no cost. As soon as he was able to, Izuku immediately began training, with Tashinori earnestly helping him. Months passed as the beach began to clear up. Cleaning up the trash and strength training was not the only focus, though. Tashinori would spar with him, using his all might form. The pleasant surprise for them both was Izuku was now able to sink his head into the water, and not lose his strength. Still, they invested quite a bit of time in teaching Izuku how to swim. Still, training was going well for Izuku as well as his academics. Katsuki no longer bothered him, opting to ignore Izuku, except for borrowing notes or asking questions every now and then. Despite Katsuki disliking Izuku, he knew Izuku was smart, and chose to use that instead of letting his pride throw it away. Nine months later, All Might grinned as he stared at the completely cleaned Gaba Municipal Beach. The one so-called junk place for people to toss their trash was now sparkling clean. He was so proud of Izuku, who had certainly gone beyond what he had planned but secretly desired. Izuku had gone plus ultra on his training, never complaining about the workload as All Might increased the difficulty. Speaking of Izuku, come on, Midoriya, you're almost there. Laughed All Might as he sat on Izuku's back. Izuku was panting as he carried All Might in his buff form, while running with strapped weights on his ankles and wrists. Though he could have made it easier by using a bit of one for all, Izuku refused point blank to use it during muscle training, preferring to strengthen his base strength as much as possible. It was not just his strength they worked on, but also his quirks, both separately and in conjunction. Pushing his limits, Izuku managed to push his stretching limits to 200 yards. As for one for all, the first time he used it, he accidentally used 100%, and actually fractured his bones and tore the muscle, to their surprise. That made recovery girl scold the two of them for two hours straight about being careful. In time, Izuku was able to use 100% without it shattering his bones, but there were still some recoil problems. Sparring with All Might was also something Izuku did, just to make sure he could fight well. Even at 100% from All Might, Izuku was able to nullify the blows with his quirk's natural ability. However, that didn't mean All Might had other plans. Izuku found himself being tied up, being punched back before being slammed into the ground, and slammed with a double palm strike from both All Might's hand, to create a shock wave to hurt Izuku, and other methods. It served as a humbling experience that despite being able to nullify physical blows, he couldn't even touch All Might, while using both quirks at once. 
Still, it pushed Izuku to better himself, so he could be worth of All Might's decision. Well done, young Midoriya. Boomed All Might's horse, to have cleaned out the entire beach in just 9 months. Now, I'd say take the month to relax and prepare for the written portion, but you keep training. Still, I am proud of you for doing so well. Keep up the training schedule that I gave you, and you'll be prepared to take the exam by storm. Thank you very much, All Might, bowed Izuku, vowing to keep up the schedule. He also added that he needed to go swimming more to make sure he could do water rescues when the time came. Well then, it is time for me to be off. Declared All Might, keep sparring in your dojo. I've taken the time to meet your grandmaster of the dojo, and let me tell you, she is one hell of a fighter. And with that, All Might dashed off to wherever help was needed. Izuku was jogging home for the day when on his path crossing the street, he met three siblings coming from the opposite end of the crosswalk, or what he assumed was siblings, as they all shared the same frog characteristics, along with dark sea green hair. Look both ways before crossing the road you two Kiro, lectured the eldest of the three, a female that looked to be about his age. Okay. Cheered the youngest female. Alright, Tsuyunisen, nodded the only male in the family, the middle child. The trio greeted Izuku politely as he greeted them back when they all heard a noise, as if something crashed into a vehicle. Watch out for that truck. Screamed a civilian. All four of them looked up to see a truck flying towards them. Tsuyu quickly grabbed her siblings, ready to leap out of the way when she noticed the other person standing there, looking towards the falling truck. She was about to shoot out her tongue and wrap it around Izuku when he caught his fist back. Izuku began channeling one for all, allowing the power to surge through his body, before focusing it on his right arm. Red veins pulsed through the set arm for a bit as power gathered into it. Using only 30% of it, Izuku smashed his right fist into the truck as it was still flying in the air, extending his arm to meet it. The truck halted upon impact, falling down onto the ground. Whoa, said the two younger siblings. Strong, noted Tsuyu. Then, a villain came charging towards them, trying to escape Kamui Wood and Death Arms. Halt, Evildor, in the name of justice. Shouted Kamui Wood. Izuku was about to move when he noticed not only Tsuyu and her siblings were there, but behind them, a few feet away, were children not paying attention to their surroundings. If Izuku moved, he was sure the siblings would easily as the older sister had a grip on them. He wasn't so sure about the other children. Kid. Shouted Death Arms, noticing Izuku and the group of children behind him, help us stop him. You have permission to do so. Izuku nodded, jumping forward a bit. Head back, said Izuku towards Tsuyu, prompting her to move. Izuku clenched up before inhaling as much air as he could. He suddenly inflated like a giant balloon as he kept sucking up as much air as he could. Out of the way. Shouted the reptilian villain as he charged right into Izuku. Izuku clenched his gut as the villain went deeper and deeper into Izuku, using one for all to hold his ground. The villain's momentum was completely halted and found himself stuck inside. He tried punching and kicking, but it was useless. Kamui would, catch. Squeaked Izuku as he thrust his hip forward, rebounding the villain out of his gut. The villain was sent flying, and only the quick action of Kamui would prevented the villain from crashing into the truck on the street. Quickly binding the villain, he gave the villain a quick knockout blow to the head. Thanks for the assist, waved Kamui Woods. I see that you've gotten stronger, chuckled Death Arms looking at Izuku's body, still not sure what your quirk is, though. You can stretch, expand, and deliver strong blows. Still, don't go looking for trouble, alright. It's not like I go looking for it, it just finds me, joked Izuku, causing all three of them to chuckle a bit. Looking forward to when you hit pro, said Death Arms as he waved goodbye. You better be in the heroics program for whatever school you're going to. As Izuku was about to leave, he turned around just in time to stop himself from crashing into Tsuyu. You're strong, Kiro, complimented Tsuyu. Are you going for the heroics program? Yay, I'm planning to go to the examination for Yue Hai, replied Izuku. Ooh, isn't that the one you're planning to go to? Asked the youngest sibling. Yay, she's been studying a lot for that school, replied the brother. So we can't keep bothering her all the time, okay? It was selfless of her to take us all the way over here to see the museum. It's alright, family is important, Kiro placated Tsuyu before turning to Izuku. Thanks for saving us all. I'm sure you could have rescued your siblings easily, replied Izuku. I noticed you were already about to move, and even ready to rescue me, even though we're strangers. Tsuyu so blushed slightly on this, but shook it off. Well then I hope we meet in Yue then, Kiro. I'm Tsuyu Asi. Izuku Midoriya, replied Izuku as he lifted his hands to give her a handshake. Tsuyu so complied, noticing how firm his grip was. Best of luck to the both of us, said Izuku before leaving. He seems cool, noted the youngest sibling. Will he be your boyfriend? Let it be said that in the Asui family, saying whatever was on their mind was a family trait. Suzuki. So you half screeched. I wouldn't mind. He seemed pretty chill with our frog-like looks, not to mention his hair color is something you like, said the brother. Not you too Samitor, groaned Tsuyu, though she couldn't completely deny her brother's accusation. Three weeks passed with Izuku eagerly counting down the days on his calendar. Since he had finished cleaning up the beach, Toshinori used his connections to have a home gym set that he endorsed placed at their home to allow Izuku to continue his strength training. It was even modified to go beyond the normal weight set for Izuku. 
and Ko gave Tashinori a kiss to the cheek to thank him, causing him to blush and walk out in a daze. That day, he went plus ultra. Five days before the exam, Izuku was jogging at the Dagaba Municipal Beach, taking in a slight guilty pleasure in knowing he had cleaned it. Though this day was somewhat different to the usual schedule, Momo Yoyorozu was exploring around the Misatafu Prefecture, as she was getting ready to attend Yue High. She was excited to be attending such a prominent school, and she had gotten in via recommendation. Though she lived in the Aichi Prefecture and could have attended one of the more well-known schools there, she had her heart set for Yue, she aced the written practical, and was already set for attending Yue. All she needed to do was wait, though she wanted to explore the city she would be living in. She had also already finished her middle school finals, having taken them early. The only problem was the distance between Misatafu and Aichi prefectures, as it would take 3 hours via high-speed railways. So to solve that problem, her parents had bought her a freaking manor for her to live in. Her mother would come to visit every weekend to help, and the servants and maids would also be there to clean. However, she put her foot down when they asked if she wanted them to move in with her. She was training to be a hero, and for that, she needed to be able to do things by herself without her parents catering to her every whim. The servants and maids she thought were already too much, as was the manor. All she really needed was a cleaning crew to help clean out the manor every now and then. While exploring, she had read about Dagaba Municipal Beach, and how it had transformed from a junk heap back into the beautiful beach it once was, now a hot spot for couples. Rumor had it that a boy and a muscular man could be seen here every morning at 6 until it was cleaned. None of the heroes had claimed cleaning it, nor did any organization, so that was left a mystery. Seeing that it was popular now, she went to the beach, sitting on the sand and admiring the view as the sun slowly set. No right, this is beautiful, said Momo as she stared at how the water reflected the sun's rays. As she laid there to enjoy the warmth of the sand and sun, it was ruined when a nasal sounding voice rang out. Hello, hot stuff. Want us to show you around. We'll show you a good time. Momo opened her eyes, sitting back up to see two leering teenagers older than her, most likely sophomores in high school. Despite the fact she was only 14, her body spoke a different story. Already having a well-developed chest, long legs, and a narrow waist, she was also currently just wearing shorts and a low-cut beach top. No? Please leave me alone, stated Momo without hesitation, making it clear she was not interested. Akman, said the nasal voice once more, coming from a teenager with mosquito eyes and nose, I promise it'll be a wild ride. I said no, Momo almost shouted, now standing up and slowly backing away from the two. You haven't even tried it yet, said the other, who had an octopus head for a head along with tentacles. This place is popular for couples, so obviously you're looking for one. One ride from us, and you'll never want anybody else. That logic was completely faulty, muttered Momo as she readied herself. She really didn't want to fight, but if she needed to, she would use her quirk, creation. The only problem was that it could jeopardize her insured entrance to Yuehai. She was sure that under the articles of self-defense she could use it, but she didn't want to risk a black mark so early. As the boys began to get closer, she was ready to create a staff from her arms when another voice interrupted them. She said no, so leave her alone. At your own girl, snapped both boys as they whirled around to backhand whoever was interrupting them. They found their fists caught in firm hands from a green-haired teenager, who was roughly 5'9 and wearing a green tracksuit. The two teens tried to tug their hand away, just to find them firmly in the other teen's hand. They tried to raise their other fists to punch, but the defender pulled them forward before maneuvering himself, so his arms were around both attacker's shoulder, standing in between them. The attackers both tried to punch their target's head, only for him to just duck and cause their fists to collide into each. Wincing in pain, they were not prepared for the other guy to suddenly back up a little, grab their wrists, and collide painfully have them collide into each other, before grabbing their heads and crashing them into each other once more. Momo blinked in shock and amazement at how fast the other teenager had neutralized her harassers. Thank you for stopping them, thank Momo, getting a good look at her knight in shining armor. No worries, they should have learned that no means no, replied the teenager as he turned around to face Momo, are you alright? I'm fine, thank you, bowed Momo, may I know the name of my hero? I'm Momo Yoyorozu. Izuku Midoriya, smiled Izuku as he bowed back, and it's not a big deal. I was just doing my daily jog when I saw what was happening. Plus I'm sure you could have handled them. Izuku had noticed besides the most obvious traits hormonal teenagers would look for in a female body if they swung that way, that Momo had slim arms with muscles in them. Not to mention her eyes were narrowed, ready to attack before Izuku intervened. While it's true that I have been taught hand-to-hand -hand combat, I doubt I could have done it as easily as you did, acknowledged Momo. So what brings you here? Asked Izuku, changing the subject. I came here to explore the Mistufa prefecture, explained Momo. I wanted to familiarize myself with this area as I am moving here. I wanted to come here because of how I heard of this place, which used to be a junk pile, which before then was a beach, was cleaned up. My parents told me the view was beautiful before all the trash came to be. Well I'm a local here, chuckled Izuku, if you want, I can show you around if you don't mind. That would be splendid, smiled Momo, sticking out her elbow. 
Izuku Hotel boats with Momo as the two walked away from the unconscious bodies. After sending a quick text to his mother that he would be eating out, they went to eat at a restaurant where Izuku confidently claimed they had the best pork katsudin in the prefecture, before ordering the katsudin combo. Momo giggled a bit at Izuku's statement, but went along with it, ordering the katsudin curry combo, along with an extra side of gyoza. As soon as the food came out, they both clapped their hands and said Iidadakimasu, before digging in. So Yoyoza san started Izuku, but Momo raised her hand to stop him. Please, just call me Momo, stated Momo. Only if you'll call me Izuku, replied Izuku, to which she nodded in reply. So you're done with the school year? Asked Izuku as they were eating. Yes. I took the exam early as I have been recommended to high school and have been accepted, nodded Momo. That's awesome, grinned Izuku. Aldera Middle School doesn't have enough recognition to recommend any students. Which school are you going to? At this, Momo crossed her legs, fidgeting a bit before telling him, I've been accepted to the heroics course at UA High. She was slightly afraid of telling this to her new friend, whom she found quite cute. Most of her classmates back at her middle school scorned her when they found out she was accepted into one of the most prestigious schools in Japan on a recommendation. What made it worse was that her parents had gotten it for her as a birthday gift when she mentioned she wanted to attend Yue High. Though she loved the fact that she would be going there, her classmates disagreed. It was one of the reasons why she opted to take her exit exam early, to avoid the glares and jealousy of her classmates. Some of the people she thought were friends turned their backs on her. That's, so, awesome. Shouted Izuku, swallowing his poor katsu. You must be really smart and have a really good core to be able to get that good of a recommendation that you can enter Yue High. Momo let out a sigh of relief before looking at Izuku, his eyes were sparkling with excitement. Can I ask what your quirk is? Izuku asked with excitement. Unable to stop herself from smiling or giggling at the sight of an excited Izuku, she explained her quirk to him. My quirk is called creation. I can convert the fat cells in my body into anything I want, as long as it's not a living being. I just need to understand the atomic configuration of the said object I'm trying to create. As if to show an example, she created a Russian Matryoshka doll from her arms, a red glow showing the process. That's awesome, said Izuku in excitement. You'd be useful in so many different situations, from fighting to rescue missions. You could easily switch from frontline to support in a heartbeat. Momo blushed a little at Izuku complimenting her so earnestly. It was refreshing to hear someone talk more about her abilities, especially so honestly and eagerly. So what's your quirk? Asked Momo, and where are you planning to go? Though, I'm applying to get into the heroics course at UA, Izuku said. I've always wanted to be a hero to help protect others. As for my quirk, Izuku paused before stretching his face with his hands to impossible human lengths. I'm made out of rubber. Seeing Izuku make a funny face with his stretched face caused Momo to fall into a fit of giggles. After Izuku stopped making funny faces, Momo was able to regain her breath. So you can stretch your face and limbs? Asked Momo. That means your skin has elastic properties. Yes, but not just my skin, but even my muscles and bones, everything, clarified Izuku before going into more details about his quirk. They spent the night talking even more after dinner, taking a night stroll at the beach before Izuku escorted Momo back to her house. Well, I hope to see you at UA High then, said Momo. I'm looking forward to being your classmate. Yay, I won't fail, smiled Izuku. I made a promise to make it to UA High, and to become a hero. Seeing Izuku this confident and knowing he was intelligent based on the conversations they had, Momo knew that Izuku would make it in. Just before Izuku left, though, Momo leaned forward. For luck, then, whispered Momo before giving him a peck to the cheek before turning to leave. Izuku blushed crimson, his hand touching where Momo had just kissed him while standing there for a good 10 minutes before finally going home. It's almost time, whispered Izuku to himself as he laid in bed. Time to start my journey to become a great hero, like All Might, and maybe become the greatest hero like you wanted me to. He raised his hands to the ceiling, where there was an All Might poster, and clenched his fist in excitement. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want the next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below, and turn on the bell notification. And also check out other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.